Of late, they have been looking more diligently after their flocks, inquiring into the evils of private baptism, restoring partially presbyterial visitation of parishes, taking cognizance of heresy and immorality among their own order. Here a footnote. Quote, it is a fact strikingly illustrative of the different moral spirit of the parties, that in six years of evangelical ascendancy, seven clergymen have been disposed for immorality, while not one case of this kind was put on record during the last twenty years of moderate rule, unquote. And contending boldly, though in a modified and rather equivocal way for the rights of the Christian people and the spiritual independence of the Church. Let them continue their exertions, and she will soon be freed of the odious sobriquet, quote, corrupt Kirk, unquote, which she has been long yelped. The Canaanite and Perizzite dwell in the land, but in the name of the Lord they shall be rooted out. Let law agents, men of a secular profession, whose glory often is, to make the worse appear, the better reason, to perplex and dash, maturest councils, and who have nothing to do as such in the management of matters of ecclesiastical discipline and order, be entirely banished from church courts. As these are strictly courts of, from church courts, as these are strictly courts of conscience, excuse me, let the fan be applied with vigor and promptitude to such theologues as the writer of the true plan of a living temple, quote, He that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord, unquote. Let honesty and, profession, uh, let honesty and professing non-intrusion principles be manifested by allowing the people to elect those who are to rule over them in the eldership. Let there no longer be a fulsome fraternizing and currying of favor with prelatists whom our fathers learned by costly experience to term malignants, and, as the evangelical party are become a powerful, increasing majority, and can suspend and depose, let them no longer recognize corruptors of the gospel and enemies of the confession of faith as brethren. Purity of communion will, will do indefinitely more in securing the honor, prosperity, and stability of the church than all the schemes which without, uh, which without it excuse me, she can possibly devise. When sin is in the house, there is reason to fear ruin is at the door. An old leak will sink the ship, if not timiously repaired. A raging fire within, if not extinguished, however secure it is made outside, will speedily destroy the house. And while the worst internal evils are allowed to remain, and there is grievous ulceration at the core, it is absurd to suppose that zeal for extension and external reformation, with respect to the law of patronage, state encroachments, and other matters, will save the church from ruin. The words of the Savior on a similar occasion may justly be applied here, quote, These things ye ought to have done, and not left the other undone, unquote. He commands to begin within, and his direction should by no means be reversed, quote, Clean the inside of the cup, that the outside may be clean, unquote. A scriptural reformation never did, and never can take place by a half measure, and as it has been shrewdly remarked, the extension of an impure church is nothing but the extension of corruption. Let Reformed Presbyterians be thankful that, however much else they may fail in its proper exercise, they are not in any case under secular constraint to dispense with scriptural discipline, as it is an ordinance of Christ, a divinely instituted barrier which he has drawn around his church. Let them earnestly contend for it, as a part of the faith once delivered to the saints, and never be ashamed of being called disciplinarians. It is by giving due attention to this particular feature of the Reformation, strict and impartial discipline, that we have in some measure succeeded in establishing our claim in one respect to the title Reformed Presbyterians. Submit willingly to its faithful administration as to the law of Christ's house, and never tempt your rulers to relax it by seeking refuge from its operation in the bosom of less strict communions. Some ignorant place, uh, some ignorantly place, excuse me, the reliance of their hearts for righteousness and holiness, for life and blessedness on the sacraments, they evidently make an idol, or rather a savior, of the mere elements, and if on necessary grounds they are denied, or for a time refuse the enjoyments of these, they regard it a piece of cruel injustice, forsake ordinances, and perhaps abandon the very form of godliness. Brethren, these things ought not so to be. Follow no such disgraceful and sinful practices as they lead to apostasy and perdition. But it should also, um, excuse me, but it should be recollected 
that external subjection, even to the best system of discipline, is not enough. Some treat with marked disregard everything which they account not essential to religion, and judge that as good men are to be found among all denominations, the external order of the church merits no consideration. This is a very pernicious extreme, but an opposite one. Not less dangerous is to lay inordinate stress upon external arrangements and rest fully satisfied in a mere outward conformity to certain scriptural rules as if this would save us. The important principle should never be forgotten that external things are only means for effecting something higher, that the end of all institutions is the conversion of sinners and edification of saints, and that, in so far as these objects are not attained, their design is completely lost. Soldiers may be trained to obey orders and perform with ease and precision the varied evolutions of military exercise, and yet be wanting in courage and patriotism, the veriest cowards when facing an enemy. So you may be well disciplined in external forms, and yet strangers to the spiritual warfare, and inexperienced in fighting the good fight of faith. Quote, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Unquote. Let not zeal for external forms, however proper and necessary, usurp the place of that personal humility, self-denial, watchfulness against sin, Satan, and the world, fidelity in the discharge of every duty, and devotedness to the promotion of God's glory, which are essential and highly ornamental to the Christian character. External communion, however pure, will not supply the want of grace in the heart. Give diligence, then, in making your calling and election sure, and do not rest satisfied in anything in religion short of an interest in Christ by faith. Quote, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned." Unquote. The shade of a spreading tree or projecting rock may cool and refresh you in a day oppressively sultry, but the mere shadow of religion will not shelter you in that fearful day which shall burn as an oven, when all the wicked shall be as stubble. The tares and the wheat, quote, grow together until the harvest, but in the time of harvest the Lord will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. They shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth." Unquote. On the day of winnowing, the Jewish farmer would have lost his anxious and important labor had the wind shifted and driven back the, sh the chaff again among the wheat. To prevent this disagreeable occurrence, it was customary to kindle the chaff, which is worth little or anything, on the breezy side that the fire might be fanned and fed till the whole refuse was consumed. As it, never became, as it never became extinguished till its work of destruction was complete, it was called, quote, the fire unquenchable, unquote. And this is the liveliest image our world can furnish of the everlasting destruction of the wicked. Hell is the, quote, unquenchable fire, unquote, that will consume the chaff, and into it all hypocrites, self-deceivers, unbelievers, and every class of obdurate and finally impenitent sinners will be irre irrecoverably cast. It is said the place of slaughter at, Jeru at Jerusalem was Tophet, in the valley of Hinnom, or Shrieking. It was called Tophet, a timbrel or tabret, from the beating of drums to drown the cries of the children there cruelly burnt in the fire to the idol Molech, and probably from a constant fire being kept there to consume the useless carcasses and other offal brought to it from the city, it has been made a figure of hell. Quote, for Tophet is, is ordained of old, yea, for the king it is prepared. He hath made it deep and large, the pile thereof is fire and much wood, and the breath of the Lord, like a stream of brim brimstone, doth kindle it." Unquote. Such is but a faint emblem of the fearful gulf into which the wicked will be cast at last, to be forever tormented by the devil and his angels, quote, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. And here a footnote. After the grain is winnowed, they, in Syria, lodge it in the matamors, or subterraneous magazines, as the custom was formerly of other nations, two or three hundred of which are sometimes together, the smallest holding four hundred bushels. That from Shaw's Travels. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. O oh, by faith solemnly anticipate the appalling scenes that will be witnessed on the coming day of doom, and quote, the Lord grant unto us that we may find mercy of the Lord in that day, unquote a day for which all other days were made.
the last in nature's course, the first in wisdom's thought.